we're doing today on the Cummins is we're installing the heater treater mod. So if you have trouble with your blend door, it ain't blowing out right, you're either getting cooked by heat or froze out in the winter with the air conditioner blowing. That's why we're gonna show y'all what to do. All right, so what we're working on is this right here, your blend door actuator. And Dodge was really some geniuses with, there's this Phillips head right here. And there's another one, right? but it's right back here in the back where that stud is back there so it's real fun to get to you gotta take you a bit with a crescent wrench or if you have one of those angle screwdrivers uh, the right angle screwdrivers you can get it so we're gonna get the carpet pulled back we're gonna unplug it unplug right here and then you gotta take this little plastic box off right here that Gary's working on right now two Phillips head screws in there and this heater treater mod is what it is is on that actuator there's a plastic collar in there and this one's metal so they make this metal collar and that back stud that's so hard to get to they make this screw in stud when you put one of these little 5 16 nuts on it and then this wire here is for hooking up to the actuator while you have it off to test it make sure it's working right and it can get out of uh, What's the word? It can get unset, out of sequence, whatever, with the gears because it's been sitting there just running and spinning because the plastic collar that this replaces is just sitting there spinning because it's not meeting any resistance. So we're going to get the carpet pulled back. Where's your drill at? It's up there on the workbench. What are you going to do with these bolts? Put them uh, in the door panel, I get, or up on the dash. And that. Let me break this loose before I strip it out. I'm soaking wet. This is all moldy. Stinky smelling. Here's one bolt. Here, put it up. So this sound deadening stuff is. It's probably a good three quarters of an inch thick. And to get to that back bolt, we're gonna cut kind of a triangle shape out of here so I can access that back screw better. And then we'll just be able to put lay it back in there and put the carpet back over it. So you got to get this out. Yeah. yeah. He's got to take that out so he had to cut a big hole in the floor. Next time we'll just probably cut a hole through the bottom that way. We can yeah, we'll just cut easier. the whole floorboard out. Cut the full board out. Right Using the Phillips bit and my vice grips to get up here and get that back screw. And it ain't real tight. It's just a real pain in the butt to get to it. Getting about a quarter of a turn, maybe. Each time. This is why it makes sense to have that little stud back there where you can just put a nut on it instead. Is that what it comes with? Yeah. So this is steel and it's got this plastic collar. Yep. Here, come out here in the sun. You see it's cracked. It's split all the way down there. It's cracked all the way across. So every time it tries to turn that blend door with that little oblong part, it's just skipping on it. So when I looked at it the other day, it was just sitting here doing this. I think just sitting on there turning and turning and turning nonstop. <clears throat> all right, so you've got all these little tabs on your actuator here you pop off. Make sure it's laying with the shaft 
the side down so your gears don't all fall out. Comes this neat little wire here in the kit that's stripped already. And then the idea with this is you're gonna sit here and test your motor. This is gonna let you know your actuator works right. Just like that. Then you have to align your gears. This little dot. Can you see that dot on that gear? Is it showing up? But there's a little raised dot, right? Right there at the tip of my knife. Yeah. So it's what this thing does is it turns till it, it meets a certain amount of resistance, is what it does. Turning the blend door. So the kit comes, this little stud, the screw threads on one end, and you got your nut threads on the other. It comes with the two nuts, and so I locked them together, and we're going to thread it in there, and then we're going to back them both back off. That way you're not dealing with putting the screw in, in this back one here. It's so hard to get to, you just deal with threading the nut on it then. Alright, so when you put your heater treater piece in here, this is it right here, slid on. You have to put the blend door in the midway position, so that's all the way counterclockwise. That's all the way clockwise. So I'm just kind of feeling between the two. That should be about should be about midway right there. Let's see about a stay on there. And then we're going to slide the motor back on, bolt it back up, plug it up, and we're going to try it. All right, we got it all installed. Right here, we're going to watch it gear go cold. You see it turning. It's going to stop. Now go full the other way. Now go blended between hot and cold at 12 o'clock. There you have it. It should be right. We're going to crank the truck up and see how it cools. I put it on bed, Gary. So we're set on cold right now. And I'm getting cool air out of the vent. I go hot. We noticed his floor was wet. His floor was wet all right here. Which is another common problem with these dodges because that tube right right there behind the dryer, the tube barely sticking out of the firewall, is your drain for your air conditioner. And what it does, it'll trickle out and instead of running down, it's going to run behind that, that heat insulation you see there and ends up getting in the floorboard in the truck and then running down the floor getting your carpet all wet and moldy and it'll rust the floor out in the truck over time. But So we're going to put us a tube on there. I'm going to see what I can come up with for making a 90 degree to make it turn straight down you want me to use and get that water out of there. There's the hose hooked up right there for the drain. I ran it right over here. It come out right there. Now zip tight right there to the brake line. So now the AC will drain out here, and it won't have a chance to run down the firewall and get the floorboard wet. Another dumb thing they should have done from the factory. Yeah. Hey Gary, what are you doing? Putting foam on it. Back here.
This doesn't look pretty, people, but that's how we're sticking the foam, the rubber back down for the carpet to go back over. It's just sound, there doesn't we it? Go. So it ain't got to be pretty. Troy, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? Why? Did I didn't bring I you know. any? Yeah, because you didn't bring me none. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you, you wonder wondering what he ate for breakfast? I don't know. Something might be on it. <laughs> It looks like something had mustard in it. Listen, my Either biscuit, baby my, my biscuit <laughs> fell and it slung in the back of the truck on the floorboard. In the nice truck. Yeah, and I still ate it because I wasn't gonna waste money. I'm cheap. Mm. Well, well, let me get you a paper here. Towel. Come here, look that off. <laughs> clean them up, guys. <laughs> so what we're doing here? You see how wet the floor is. We finished up on the Gray Cummins. We got the uh, the blend door actuator fixed, and uh, we also fixed that that drain for his uh, AC box. Put a new hose on that, and uh, dried his carpet out where it had gotten wet. And then we didn't video it, but we worked on that valve on his front axle. He's having issues with his four wheel drive. It was just needed to be cleaned and lubed up. So uh, me and Troy got all that going. It's Automatic Garage. Y'all like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to check us out at AutomaticGarage.com and check us out on Facebook. Uh, if you're not already subscribed and you're watching the videos, please subscribe. And uh, we'll holler at y'all later. We got more projects coming.